maybe then turn to um, committee feedback, and we've got uh, feedback from some uh, six or seven committees this morning, uh, and I'm going to invite the chairs of the committees respectively to speak to the brief reports that we have in the papers. Ed, may we turn to you, please, in relation to the audit committee? Yes, I um, set out uh, the report to the board that I came after the last audit committee meeting, um, and, and it's there uh, as a record. I think just in terms of progress, uh, we've made good progress on setting up a, uh, a steering group and a process to look at the information uh, technology governance to support TIM and the uh, ISCG uh, in, it, in its work, and I think that will um, be reported formally in terms of its conclusions to a future board. Um, and in terms of the risks during the course of the year um, and projecting to the year end, uh, we're monitoring those. The one that I think we just need to uh, raise and monitor a bit more closely is the transfer of balances um, from the old system to the new system. Um, and we're having uh, fairly intense discussions with the Department <coughs> of Health about uh, the obligations they have to send us the information for the legacy balances so that we can... Um, make sure that we start our own system with, with the right and accurate information. That is quite tricky, and um, um, we're probably going to have to put some additional resource into getting that sorted out. But there's nothing else. We're um, up and running with full internal audit and um, a, a good um, now reporting of financial information through to uh, the F&I committee. <coughs> Happy to take any questions. Any questions to, to Ed? Thank you very much. Uh, the next committee report is uh, from the Efficiencies Control Committee. Do I add to the report as it's laid here? So happy to take questions, but otherwise it's all moving along. Any questions, Paul? No, thank you. Uh, the next one then is the report of the Finance and Investment Committee, uh, which would be Moira, but since she's not with us, Paul. Or Ed, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, again, uh, there's nothing I would want to add to this, but this report. This, this committee does now meet quite regularly uh, and has a pretty full agenda, uh, but there's nothing in addition to what uh, has been reported in the paper. Thank you. Uh, in which case, we move on to uh, commissioning support. Margaret. Um, as Pete said, the commissioning support committee has overseen the performance of the commissioning support um, uh, group units over the relevant period and has seen some good results actually. In fact, it's worth calling out that um, 15 um, of the uh, support units won new business um, to the tune, tune of 17 million um, over the period, which I think is actually um, very heartening. And also that they're working together where necessary um, to provide some, some greater efficiencies, which is also um, really worth noting. Um, I think the one call out is that um, as uh, the, the committee is looking to um, uh, see the degree to which the, the support units can gain independence, um, autonomy throws forward some quite major issues and so the committee intends to get some more work done and will meet again before the December board and come back to the board with further information about the options regarding autonomy. Thank you. Any questions for Margaret? No, well, thank you. In which case, may we turn then to the uh, Congenital Heart Disease Review Board, uh, the task and finish group, which I shall give a brief report on. Uh, the first thing is to say that we've had two meetings of the task and finish group since um, the last meeting of this board. Uh, one was on the 30th of September, and the note of that meeting is in your papers. Uh, the second one uh, was more recently on the 29th of October, and we haven't yet got a formal note of that meeting, but I will make one or two comments on it as I report this morning. Just um, two or three things to which I would wish to draw uh, attention of the Board. The first is around the scope um, and the interdependencies of the review that we're undertaking. Uh, you'll see that, that uh, our discussion in September is outlined in paragraph uh, 5, of the report in front of you, uh, but to update you at our meeting uh, at the end of October, uh, we came to a view that uh, the core of our review should be the whole lifetime pathway of care for people with congenital heart disease, and that, that provides us with a clarity uh, of approach for the review which we felt wasn't there previously. 
uh, arguments about interdependencies and the relationship between child and adult uh, congenital heart disease were otherwise causing us, uh, I think, some problems of definition. Um, I'll, I'll ask in a moment whether Bruce wishes to uh, add anything to the discussion that we had on that. Uh, secondly, a discussion about the nature of working of the task and finish uh, group. Uh, we were clear that uh, we wanted to be uh, open and transparent uh, in what we did, but that because this was a small and formal task and finish group rather than a formal meeting of the board, uh, we would continue to have our discussions in a private and informal setting, uh, but subject always to a full report coming back to the board. So I would have wished that the full report of our second meeting were with us today, but it just proved impossible to prepare that in time to um, uh, put out with the, uh, with the board papers. Um, thirdly, we've had a, a, a lengthy discussion not only about the working of the task and finish group itself, but of the reference group and participation groups around it. And sensitive to the process on the previous occasion of the Safe and Sustainable Review, an absolute insistence upon proper handling of conflicts of interest, of reporting conflicts of interest, uh, and of ensuring that the chairs of each of the different panels was alert to potential conflicts of interest, that they were in the public domain, understanding that this is an area of activity where conflict of interest is almost inherent, because there's a relatively small clinical community uh, operating here, uh, and we, we just need to be absolutely clear uh, that conflicts uh, are identified and that real uh, conflicts of interest are parked either by uh, people not participating in meetings or by being absolutely clear that their representation in the meeting is not of their particular provider but of their discipline uh, and of the broader group that they, that they might uh, represent. Uh, the next issue that is worth touching upon this morning is timeline. Uh, I am anxious that this should not drag on. I am absolutely committed to ensuring uh, that we make rapid progress uh, and that we work across the whole provider sector uh, in understanding what is the national requirement uh, for a service for congenital heart disease uh, and that we make progress with an ambition at the moment of coming back to this board by the middle of June next year uh, with a firm and clear proposition. Uh, and I think it will be a failure of justice to all of those who are affected by this review if we fall short on that ambition. Whether that will be as crystallized and as clear and as sharp as, as we would wish at this stage, I, I, I really can't promise, but um, we are committed to, uh, to doing this uh, review at some pace. Finally, I just wanted to uh, read out to uh, the full board uh, the uh, objectives that we have agreed for the review uh, and just to ensure that you have early notice of this and that they're not going to await coming to the full board uh, in December. The first is to develop standards to give improved outcomes, minimal variation and improved patient experience. And secondly, that we should analyse the demand for specialist inpatient congenital heart disease care now and in the future. Thirdly, uh, to make recommendations about the function, the form, and the capacity of services needed to meet that demand and to meet quality standards, taking account of accessibility and health impact. Fourthly, to make recommendations on the commissioning and change management approach, including an assessment of workforce and training needs. Fifthly, to establish a system for the provision of information about the performance of congenital heart disease services to inform the commissioning of these services and patient choice. And finally, to improve antenatal and neonatal detection rates. Uh, so these are high-level objectives for the review as a whole, and um, these are matters that we will continue to carry through uh, by use of a program board, by use of a clinical advisory panel, and by use of extensive stakeholder participation and other engagement. So let me uh, pause at that point and, and invite Bruce if there's anything you'd wish to, to add to that summary, Bruce. Uh, no, thanks, Chairman. I think that's very, very clear. So any, any questions on that? Can I make a small comment? Just yes, please. There's a, an action in one of the notes for... Um, for yourself, Chair, around um, exploring the possibility of joint local government engagement and working with the overview, overview and scrutiny committees, where that works, I, 
it would be fantastic uh, if that could be achieved because they can be very helpful in the process uh, yes. as well yes. and particularly if they can work together uh, yes. so I would encourage that if I well, thank Good. you, and we're, we're fully committed to that. It's a shame Bill, Bill McCarthy's not with us this morning because he's taking the lead on that and has initiated discussions with the leadership of the OGA. Uh, but we do accept that that's a fundamental uh, basis for a future approach. Um, you know, we, we, we need to get as much convergence and consensus of opinion uh, ac across the provider sector and across the health and well-being boards as we possibly can uh, to ensure that this is not a tussle between providers but this is moving towards a nationally provided service of world-class quality. Okay, well thank you very much for that. May we then move to uh, the Authorization and Assurance Committee report from, from Victor. The paper, other than that we continue to move um, away from the sort of, um, auth well, authorization process into the assurance space with appropriate speed. I don't know whether Deb Barbara wants to. Yeah. It's in the paper. Okay, it's in the paper. Any questions on that? Yeah, well, thank you very much.